Okay, so here we go. So, um, yeah, so Abraham, uh, it, is, it is good. Thank you for sharing that. Um, God's love. Um, you know, we can never um, you know, learn all about it. Um, and uh, it's always a subject that's, um, you know, that it's good to be reminded of um, and to um, good to be reiterate, uh, you know, good to reiterate the truth of this um, aspect of God's love and what he has extended to us. So thank you. It was, it was wonderful. And also, um, yeah, something that was fresh and nice was about, uh, you know, uh, those two aspects that you shared about God's love, the highest to the lowest and, uh, and the lowest to the highest, and um, yeah, something that for for me it was uh, something that I had never seen it that way. Yeah, so that, thank you for sharing that. Um, it's a good uh, uh, the way you presented it, very clear, and uh, you described God's love, described um, and and went moved on, transitioned on to talk about the different kinds of love and so on, and and also um, you know the the challenge or the uh, the question, you know, what should our response be and uh, um, and so on. Yeah. So it was good, uh, really um, inspired, I think, inspired us to look at it and also to um, extend love and express love to others as well. Um, uh, just one suggestion is, you know, when you, uh, yeah, your I think this is your normal rate of speech, you know, you, you go at it. Um, so, um, uh, you know, you go at it pretty rapidly, right? Uh, when you, or maybe you are just aware of the time. You you can actually slow down. You can slow down. Uh, you can take your time, and you 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 know you finished well well, well uh, you know within the time. So you can uh, you know, take your time and and talk about it and uh, vary your speed. You know, um, it'll be uh, for even more greater impact. Uh, and I also felt that scripture when you know, maybe you could slow down to read the scripture. So that we, you know, really get it. Uh, we think about what you're saying. Uh, you know, what the scriptures that you've read out, or maybe displaying it would have helped. We could just, you know, read it. Uh, it'll be there on the screen. But since you're not displaying it, uh, you could just uh, slow down and read it out, and um, you know, uh, it'll help. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that is all I have uh, in terms of feedback. And uh, uh, yeah. So so Abraham, what do you do, and wh where are you from? Um, uh, all right, so I'm from Ghana, but I'm You're currently from... in Vietnam. Yes. In Vietnam, yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. So, are you a student? Are you studying, working? Um... So, currently, yeah, I'm teaching English oh, okay. and not a student at the same time. Yeah. Right. Nice. Nice. Yes. Okay. All the best. God right, bless. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Um, any other feedback from the class? If you would like to share something or any other input. Um, Okay. So just a small yes, input. I just put it in the chat. When we mm. talk about John 3.16, uh, if you can just connect it with John, 1 John 3.16, mm. it will uh, show us what we have to do after uh -huh. receiving the love of God. Right. Mm. Yeah. Our responsibility, you know? Yeah. That's good. So it's easy to remember John 3.16 and 1 John 3.16. Nice. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So um, next we have uh, Beulah. Um, so Beulah is from Mysore, near Bangalore, India. So over to Beulah. Beulah, you can take this time to share. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. <clears throat> I'm actually basically from Mysore, but was in Bangalore in All People's Church and then again I'm back in Mysore right now. So yes, Pastor. So can I just yeah, yeah you can start. Yeah, it's eleven yeah. nine. You can start twelve minutes. Yeah, sure. Okay, Pastor. So I'm just sharing um about uh healing and uh, <clears throat> the main uh, thing I would like to connect here is the healing is in the atonement and it is um, uh, the children's bread that uh, a believer be healed and uh, uh, live a, a healthy life. So when we just uh, look at the present situation and everything that's going around, we see that medical science has made great strides 
in its efforts to elevate human suffering, but yet the accelerated pace of our modern society continues it to take its toll on the bodies of men and women, producing sickness that's beyond a man's ability to help. The demands for sufficient doctors, hospitals, beds and uh, cures, they grow with increasing pressure and many new drugs and medicines are creating new problems that can only intensify the message that man needs a healer God. And it is within the context of human need that the greatest message of the gospel of Christ's salvation, it shines forth as a beacon in a faithless world. And in all things, our heavenly father can be trusted to honor his word. And by the principles of faith, every Christian can discover and possess through the benefits of Calvary, all that Adam lost. Now, before people can even have a steadfast faith for healing of their body, they must be rid of all uncertainty concerning God's will in this matter. So appropriating faith cannot go beyond one's knowledge of the revealed will of God. Before even attempting to exercise faith for healing, one needs to know what the scriptures plainly teach that it is just as much as God's will to heal the body as it is to heal the soul. And it is only by knowing that God promises what you are seeking, that all uncertainty can be removed. And a steadfast faith is made possible. Now his promises are each a revelation of God, of what God is actually eager to do for us. And until we know what God's will is, there is nothing on which to base our faith. It is important that the mind of those seeking healing be renewed so as to be brought into harmony with the mind of God. The scriptures declare in Romans 5.12 that by one man sin entered the world and death by sin. Here it is plainly stated that death entered the world by sin. Therefore, it is clear that disease which is incipient of death entered into the world by sin. Since disease entered by sin, its true remedy must be found in the redemption of Christ. Even uh, honest physicians will admit this. Uh, they claim that they have only the power to assist nature and not to heal. Because since disease is part of the curse, its true remedy must be the cross. And who can remove the curse but God? And how can God justly do it? except by substitution. Now the Bible teaches us, like one writer puts it, that the disease is the physical penalty of iniquity. Since Christ has borne in his body all our physical liabilities on account of sin, our bodies are therefore released judicially from disease. Now to the question, did Jesus redeem us from our diseases when he atoned for our sins? Let's take a look at some of the scriptures. When we go into the Old Testament, we see that there are types of atonement that is given in connection with bodily healing throughout the Old Testament. For example, if we see in the book of Exodus, the 12th chapter, this chapter it refers or mentions about the Passover where the Israelites are, they are required to uh, offer a Passover lamb, apply the blood of the lamb upon the doorpost, but at the same time, they are instructed to eat the flesh of the Passover lamb. And when we come into the account of uh, what is written in Psalms 105, uh, Psalms 105, verse 37, here it states that he brought them out with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. When we look at another version, it says here, these people were all made healthy and strong and they were fit for the march. So we see here in the book of Exodus, a type of atonement where the Passover lamb is a type of the atonement of Christ. We also read in Second Chronicles chapter 30 verses 20, the Bible says that the Lord hearkened to Hezekiah and healed the people when they kept the Passover. Here also we see 
that the people of Israel had backslidden and they had not kept the Passover for a very long time. When Ezekiah calls forth people to come and celebrate and keep the Passover, and then when he prays, we see that the people God hears the prayer of Ezekiah and he heals the people. We can also look into the book of Leviticus, chapter 14, verses 18. The Bible says that the priests were instructed to make atonement for the cleansing of the leper. We see an atonement made for the leper's healing. The types in the book of Leviticus 14th and the 15th chapters, they show us that, that it was invariably through atonement that sickness was healed. And coming to the book of Numbers, chapter 16, verses 46 to 50, we see an incident uh, written here where the plague breaks out in the camp of Israel and about 14,700 people, they die of plague. And Haran, the high priest, in his mediatorial office, he, st he stood before the, between the people and between the dead and the living and he made an atonement for the removal of the plague. And when that was made, the healing of the bodies took place. And when we come to the book of Numbers, tw chapter 21, uh, verses 19, we read that the Israelites, they were asked to look at the brazen serpent, which was lifted up, which was a type of atonement. And then when we look at each one of these examples, we see if healing was not to be in the atonement, then these Israelites, why were they required to look at the brazen serpent, which was a type of atonement for their bodily healing? Both healing and the forgiveness came through the type of the atonement. Now, one of the scriptures that is very clear concerning uh, this is uh, in the Old Testament is in the book of Job, uh, chapter 33, uh, verses, um, I'd like to read from 23 onwards. It says here, if there is an angel, I'm reading from the Amplified Version, as a mediator for him, one out of a thousand to explain to a man what is right for him, that is, how to be in the right standing with God, then the angel is gracious to him and says, spare him from going down to the pit of destruction. I have found a ransom, a ransom for redemption and atonement. The word used here for ransom is... It is a price for redemption or a term that is used, an atonement. And he says, let his flesh be restored and become fresher than in the youth and let him return to the days of his youthful strength. Verse 26 says, he will pray to God and he shall be favorable to him so that he looks at his face with joy for God restores to man his righteousness that is his right standing with God, with his joys. So when we look at this particular scripture, we are just seeing because of the atonement, Job's body was healed and he was granted the right standing with God. His prayer was answered and God was favorable to him. So it is through atonement that Job's flesh was healed. And even in the book of Psalms, and David in Psalm 103, he opens up by calling upon his soul to bless the Lord and to forget not all his benefits. Then he specifies and he says, who forgives all thine iniquities and who heals all thy diseases. The atonement here provides both the forgiveness of sins and the healing of diseases. It is in the same uh, voice or the same line. He, he mentions the forgiveness as well as the healing. Every Old Testament sacrifice had to die and shed blood before the blood was effective. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. And this is another way of saying that all the promises of God, including his promise to heal over their existence and power exclusively to the redeeming work of Christ. How does God forgive sin? Of course, through the atonement of Christ and he heals the disease also in the same way. The atonement of Jesus Christ is the only ground for any benefit to the fallen man. How can God save any part of man except through the atonement? All of these typical atonements point to and prefigure the Calvary, which is the final atonement. As in the Old Testament scriptures, the types show that healing was invariably through atonement. So also the Gospels in the New Testament when we look at gospel of Matthew chapter 4, the Bible says, 
So the news about him spread throughout all Syria and they brought to him all who were sick, those suffering with various diseases and pains and those under the power of demons, epileptics, paralytics, and he healed them. And when we come to the gospel of Matthew chapter 8 verses 16 and 17, there again it's written definitely states that Christ was healing all the diseases on the grounds of the atonement. The atonement was his reason for making no exceptions while healing the sick. The Bible says here, he healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying himself took our infirmities and he bore our sicknesses. It is our sicknesses he bore, his atonement embracing us all, that, and it would require the healing of all to fulfill this prophecy. When we just take a look at Isaiah 53 verses 4 and 5, it says here, surely our griefs he himself bore and our sorrows he carried. Yet we ourselves he esteemed him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. When we see this word, bore our sorrows, the Bible here states of this word, uh, in, in, uh, in this word it is uh, our griefs and our sorrows. The word for grief is koli, meaning sickness, and the word sorrow is pain. So it is very clear that it, he bore our sicknesses and he bore our pains, which is physical as well as mental. Now, in the first Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11, Paul is telling um, us... Bill, I think uh, that's the thing, time's up, but you can finish. Yeah, you can finish. I'll just finish first. Okay. Yeah. So Paul tells us all of these things happen to us, for examples for our admonition and that which has come on the ends of the age in the sense this is for both the Gentiles and as well for the Israelites people, the, both the Israelites and the Gentiles. And also Paul says in 1 Corinthians 11 uh, verse chapter 11 verses 29 and 30 that Christ's body, when talking about the communion, is talking about the Christ's body that is to be estimated or examined when we partake of it so that so that the life of Jesus may also be man made manifest in our mortal flesh, which is written in 2 Corinthians 4.11. In conclusion, I just wanted to say that Jesus tells us in uh, Luke 4, chapter verse 19, that he was anointed to preach the acceptable year of the Lord, referring to the Old Testament year of Jubilee, which shows that the year of Jubilee is the gospel era, where people were supposed to return to their own possessions. On the day of atonement, when the atoning sacrifice was offered, and mercy was granted to the people. Uh, there was a blowing of the trumpet that announced their liberty and their release. And then it says, each man can return to our own possession. So we are in that gospel era where Christ's atonement and the announcing of the trumpet or the gospel trumpet that says he bore our sins and he bore our sicknesses to be sounded to every creature. And then every man is to return to his own possession. So the two outstanding possessions to be restored for us in this gospel area era is the health for our soul and health for our body. That the inner man and the outer man both may be made whole, ready for the service of God, thoroughly furnished unto every good work so that we could finish our course. So thank you so much, Pastor, and thank you, everyone. God Amen. bless you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Bula. Um, yeah, I think that was a, it was a very powerful a uh, reminder of the truth of atonement in the cross and uh, yeah i was just uh, you know taken back many years ago uh, when my wife and i used to come back and you know sit and listen to you know, these things were new to us like the atonement in the cross and um, uh, what jesus died for us healing as well as forgiveness and uh, forgiveness as well as healing and so we used to come and listen to those cassette tapes you know um, uh, just sit and listen and after work, uh, maybe a few hours, just take time to do that. I was reminded of, you know, those messages again. Um, yeah, but uh, uh, just coming back, it was a very uh, clear, uh, I think, teaching, um, right, starting from the Old Testament types and you moved on to the Gospels and, uh, and how healing is in the atonement and uh, a very um, necessary and important uh, message. And of course, I think um, the natural progression would be to to pray for healing, right? Uh, as uh, as you finish the message, so so why don't we do that? 
right? Um, so that's my feedback, uh, Viola. I think it was good. Uh, you need more time, of course. Um, and this uh, actually uh, uh, cannot be compressed in 12 minutes. Uh, we need to really, you know, take uh, more time. Uh, so, yeah, so that's another thing to think about, you know. Um, uh, you know uh, the topic wise you know uh, uh, do i do it in 12 minutes or is is this something you know that can can that i can do it over 3 days you know uh, uh, that's also something to think about you know um, the topic and the time um, so yeah um, so i'll just uh, that's my feedback um, uh, class if you have anything more uh, to share i can see if your feedback you can you know share uh, to bula um, yeah. Okay. So let's pray then. Let's pray for let's pray for healing. Uh, maybe some of us, um, uh, you know, this uh, based on what we heard, right? Isaiah fifty three verses four and five. He himself bore our uh, griefs, sorrows. So we know uh, what he bore on the cross, and he did it for us. So today, maybe you have uh, something in your own body uh, that needs change, or maybe there, um, there's uh, maybe someone in your family or someone in your friend circle uh, who need the touch of God. So, so let's let's just pray. Let's believe God. And let's pray. Um, so I'll just request Bula to pray. Bula, quickly, if you can just pray for those of us who need uh, healing, and uh, um, so you can you can just pray. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah, sure. Heavenly Father, we come into your presence, Father, only in the name of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is our atonement, Lord. And Father, as we see in your word, Father, you have provided for us, Lord, healing in the atonement. Lord, we thank you so much for the remission of sins and the forgiveness that you have given us. But we also want to stand to receive our full inheritance, Lord. Your word says is the earnest of our inheritance for us to have a healthy body, God. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for each one of us gathered here. I pray for our family members, Lord. I pray for our loved ones. I pray for us, Lord, the people of God who are in covenant with you. And we just, I just ask this day, Father, God, in agreement with each one of us here, for the healing of our bodies. But even as your word says, Lord, those people, Father, who ex who sat inside those houses and ate the body of the lamb that day, which was just a type of atonement they were in the Passover. And the, the Bible says that each one of them came out of their houses and the land of Egypt, Lord. They were all healed, they healthy, strong, and fit for the march. This day, God, as you're raising the army of God, Father, in this end times, I just pray that in each one of our houses, as we gather in our churches, Lord, and we partake of the body of Christ, Lord, and we partake of his blood, and we celebrate the atonement, Lord, that Christ has obtained for us, and he has finished for us the divine substitution and our redemption on the grounds of atonement, on the grounds of the redeeming working of Christ, on the grounds of his divine substitution. We just want to ask that you grant each one of us a healthy body, a healthy soul, oh God, that each one of us will be healthy and fit and strong, fit for the march, oh God, in this end times. So I thank you, Father, we receive this blessing, oh God, and we give you all the glory and honor. Let the world see what the atonement of Christ has done for us in our lives and through our lives. In the name of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray, Father God. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Bula. I think there's a prayer point which um, Rupa has put. Yeah, pray for little Cherry, uh, who's admitted with fever. Okay, let's let's just agree and pray. Okay, let's just pray right now. Father God, we pray for this little one who's admitted with fever, admitted in the hospital. Father God, we just pray for your healing hand to rest upon her right now. Lord, we pray that you will touch her and heal her. And um, uh, we, as your as your children, we take authority in the name of Jesus, and we we command that fever to leave in the mighty name of Jesus. Fever leave in mighty name of Jesus. And whatever is causing that fever, whatever is causing the symptom of fever, in the mighty name of Jesus, we rebuke that condition and we cast it out and we say, be healed. And Cherry, be healed in the name of Jesus. We release that healing and wholeness in the name of Jesus. According to the word of the Lord, according to the finished work of the cross, be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. Okay, let's pray uh, for blessing. Um, let's pray that God will touch her and uh, hypertension, high blood pressure. Okay, let's pray right now. Okay, uh, who'd like to pray for blessing? Um, um, she has high blood pressure, so let's pray for healing. Anyone else uh, would like to pray? Um, 
can I just request probably Rupa to pray? Yeah, uh, is Rupa there in the class? Uh, Rupa. Yes, sir. Yes. Just, yeah, you just yes. pray for blessing. Let's agree and pray for blessing. Yes. Uh, Father, here, here, here. Siri, we acknowledge your powerful presence in our midst, Lord. Thank you for releasing your word of healing in our midst this morning, Lord, your servant. Thank you, Master. We bring blessing into your loving presence, Lord. You know the high pressure, blood pressure that she is going through, Lord, for the past one year. Lord, send forth your word and heal her in the name of Jesus, Father God. Complete healing, body, mind, and spirit in the name of Jesus Christ, Father God. We receive it in faith. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Rupa. Thank you for praying. Um, yeah. Awesome. Praise God. Yeah. So we come to the third speaker who is... Let me check. Okay, Kennedy. Kennedy. Uh, so, yeah, Kennedy, you can go ahead. Uh, yeah, yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to share on excellence. Okay. You wanted to grace and work. But uh, unfortunately, where I am, okay, I'm by the roadside. <laughs> okay, okay. So, uh, I'm by the roadside. So, I'll just request if you can do it on Wednesday. I'm sorry, sorry. I'm by the roadside. I look like a street preacher. <laughs> As for now, okay, go ahead. <laughs> so I'll, uh, I'll request if I can do it on Wednesday because it's a bit. So you want to do it on? Okay, you want to do it on another day? Okay, that's fine. Yeah, sure. sure. Yeah, Wednesday, but my my sermon will be your excellence, mm. excellence against grace and work. Okay, okay, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, no problem. Thank that's you. fine. Thank you for um, with me. Yeah, no okay. worries. Thank you. Nice. Okay. Sorry, Kennedy is not doing it today. So, um, is anyone else who's prepared and wants to share? Um, you know, you can go ahead and share. Um, Sir, shall I share it? Yeah, yeah, sure, of course. So, Rupa, you scheduled for November sometime, right? Um, but yeah, last uh, Friday I could not share. Right. So if it is okay. Yeah, you can share. Go ahead, please. Okay. Okay, I think bad connection. So Rupa's, we'll just wait for Rupa to join in and then. Um... Okay, maybe somebody somebody can put it on the group um, and check if Rupa's connections are okay. If she'll be able to join back, and we'll give uh, probably one more minute, and then let's see. Okay, Rupa's back. Okay, yeah, Rupa. Yeah, I think you had a bad. Connectivity. Your mic is muted, Rupa. Um, your video is on, but mic is muted. Yeah, okay. I'll Can you just switch off yeah. the video if it is. Uh, no problem. Go off again. No problem. I'll just see, sir. Okay. Good morning, friends. And thank you. I thank God and thank Pastor for giving me this opportunity this morning. And my sermon topic for this morning is. Uh, an imperishable jewel in God's sight. Topic is the beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit. And the title of the sermon is Imperishable Jewel in God's Sight. And the text I have taken is from uh, 1 Peter, 3rd chapter. 1 Peter, 3rd chapter. Uh, 3 to 6, I would like to read. Three to six. Your beauty should not come from outward adornment, such as braided hair and the wearing of gold jewelry and fine clothes, 
Instead, it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. But this is the way the holy women of the past who put their hope in God used to make themselves beautiful. They were submissive to their own husbands, like Sarah, who obeyed Abraham and called him her master. You are his daughter, her daughters if you do what is right and do not give way to fear. I'll just say a word of prayer. Father God, uh, we commit this message and we want you to speak to our hearts. Open our hearts, open our ears, Lord. Father God, to receive your word and please give me the grace to convey what you want me to convey, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We invite you, Holy Spirit God, to take over in Jesus' name. Amen. Today morning, I want to just highlight in this passage the gentle spirit, the inward spirit, which the, the which, uh, this uh, passage is talking about. We all know the first Peter in the first Peter letters is talking about submission, submission to our uh, leaders, submission to our masters. Here it is the submission of a wife. To her husband in that context uh, this is written here a gentle spirit means a, sp a spirit that is gentle tender humble mild and considerate it is a spirit that is disciplined and under control at all times it does not flare up talk back rant act defensively cut in ra rave and go on and on a gentle spirit will not whine and whimper or act persecuted or take on a martyr complex. So we see not only women, but to the church, to the bride of Christ, it is written, put on gentleness and humility. It's a gentle, tender, meek, considerate, disciplined and controlled spirit. It also talks about a quiet spirit. What does it mean to be quiet and a peaceful spirit? A spirit that is at peace with God and with itself and that builds peace with its loved ones, husband, maybe the family. A quiet spirit spreads peace all throughout its home and around to everyone who enters its home. So God is saying, this is a something which he really values and this spirit is like an adornment usually we like to adorn ourselves outwardly to enhance our beauty or uh, presenting ourselves well but god is saying more than that he's not against it but he's more than that he is looking at our hearts hey, what are we putting on inside where no one else can see and only God can see. He is saying that a gentle and a quiet spirit he values and it is imperishable. All the jewels we wear perish. But this is very valuable and imperishable in God's sight. That is what this scripture is mentioning. And also we, it, he is talking about an example of Sarah. Sarah, we all know that she is Sarai. Her name was my princess, the meaning of Sarai. But God changed her name to Sarah, mother of many nations. And we have to remember, as Abraham is the pioneer and father of faith, Sarah is also a mother of faith. And we never think of Sarah in the lines of that she had a quiet and uh, gentle spirit. But when we look at, when we nearly meditate on her life, the, the life she went through, we see that uh, he, this gentle spirit is manif we, It is very easy to be gentle when everything, uh, everything around is working out very well. But our gentleness it is tested when the, the circumstances around us are very uh, pressing, 
and uh, when we are not comfortable in that position we all know that abraham was called out from his people from his nation to leave everything and to without knowing the address where he had to go he start he had to start traveling towards that place believing in god just imagine we all it is called traveling came from a word called travel travel is a word which speaks about intense pain or discomfort we go through a travel can be like a mother giving birth, birth to a child so in in those days traveling was so difficult traveling was so dangerous going to do strange places and all but in those places she agreed with her husband to follow god in faith to go to those places if i were there i would have agitated leaving my home leaving my comfortable all the people whom i love everything to live everything back and walk with my husband to the place where god is showing and you also have to remember that they don't have anyone to fall back they were pioneers of faith so they were walking only with the voice of god speaking to them once in a while they did not have written scripture they did not have a body of believers to fast comfort them or strengthen them guide them through we have to keep those things in mind when we are talking about sarah and abraham and we have to remember that at 75 years abraham left his place with his even he, he wanted god wanted to live everything but in the beginning he had to travel with his father and also with his uh, nephew lot we all know that but i am not uh, dwelling on that you know it's very difficult to travel we don't know where you are going where you are going to uh, play, uh, next place of dwelling and they were not going alone they had uh, 318 people born in their home warriors so you can understand how many sets of people are traveling families are traveling along with them and the uh, the herds and the, all the animal husbandry that is following them you can understand the magnanimity of the travel they are traveling towards and here god is saying her heart is so beautiful and in uh, genesis 12 you see you can see that abraham saying to his wife in uh, 12th chapter when they when they had to face a one second 12th chapter 10 and 11 verses now there was a famine in the land and abraham went down to egypt to live there for a while because the famine was severe as he was about to enter egypt he said to his wife sarai i know what a beautiful woman you are when the egyptians see you they will say this is his wife then they will kill me and but will let you live say you are my sister so that i will be treated well for your sake and my life will be spared because of you this is what abraham saying to his wife sarai this is not after they started and travel to egypt that is saying to his wife you have to understand that even before they started their journey in genesis 20 you see that he says in um, he is talking to abimelech the king abraham replied i said to myself there is surely no fear of god in this place and they will kill me because of my wife and he, one one more thing 12th verse he said i said to her this is how you can show your love to me everywhere we go say of me he is my brother this is what abraham wanted sarah to say wherever they went to those strange lands and you have to understand the threat was very real they used to they if the wife is beautiful they'll just kill the husband and take her away here fear his fears are not um, their valued they are genuine fears and 
I don't understand how Sarah agreed to that. Because for a woman, giving her life is very easy, but giving her honor, to sacrifice her honor is very difficult. I don't know. I see a deep relationship, a friendship, an understanding of her husband fears, and a deep, and she has a, a strong faith in the in the God who called us, called them during that time. Even though she is not expressive, but you see a, a quiet spirit in her, a gentle spirit in her. She is not uh, talking back or. Uh, in anger for what all Abraham is doing, because every time they travel, every time they they are going through a travail, so many problems. But she is always you never see her talking anything. She is very quiet and gentle, because God, the spirit of God is saying that I could understand as a woman, woman myself, if I am in her shoes, how will I feel in that situations. In the pressure, in the pressure they are going through, and she was promised. They were promised a child. She waited for nine years after the promise. I don't know how long we wait for the promises to be fulfilled in our lives, but we are very quick to judge when Sarah so many times. Here we see her so beautiful, and Surupa, so, uh, I think the time is up. But can you, um, yeah, you can conclude now. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay. Yes. Sorry. And uh, you see her so beautifully, and how God rescues her. And I just wanted to highlight, Jesus. He has rescued Sarah, but Jesus gave his life, and he has sacrificed his honor and his holiness on the cross for each one of us that we may be part of his family. So we see a great sacrifice we have received and made part of God's kingdom. And as a bride of Christ, God wants us to put on this quiet and gentle spirit, which is not easy, but with the spirit, with the help of the Holy Spirit, God, God will enable us. Thank you, sir. Sorry for that. Uh, no problem at all. Thank you. This is a wonderful message. Thank you. Um, yeah, um, I, I, was, I was wondering, you know, what you were going to share actually, um, as a imperishable vessel in God's sight. And I never really, um, looked at Sarah. I know most times we, we look at Abraham's life and study, um, you know, Abraham and he's, he, he's out there, you know, up there in front, uh, very tall figure uh, with regards to faith and all that. So, you know, very visible out there. But normally we we know that Sarah laughed and, you know, uh, we, so we kind of, uh, not, I, I don't know, at least me personally, I've not really spent time studying and looking into you know, Sarah's life. So this was uh, quite an eye opener. Thank you. Thank you, Rupa. So, um, yeah, uh, a gentle spirit quiet spirit um, you know, to God looks at a, it as something very precious like something that 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 beautifies a person um, uh, and uh, something that that is a, a to, uh, like a beautiful jewel and uh, it's amazing to see that uh, the character of the heart is seen as something that's um, that's like a jewel that's something precious and something that beautifies uh, one on the inside and uh, yeah and and also the insight that you know your gentleness will be tested you know it's it's easy to be gentle with gentle people people who are gentle but people who are aggressive and people who are loud and people who are arrogant maybe and rude it's uh, i mean it's so much more challenging to continue to be gentle right and i think that's where the uh, that's where god's spirit helps us to do that and uh, yeah. So thank you for sharing that. I think it was a very detailed uh, study, and you know, as a teacher, you know, just went. I think from the basics and the text, and the, the you know, even describing the title and the sermon title and the topic, and yeah. So very, very, um, uh, very detailed, uh, etc. Yeah. So I, I, my my only thing is, of course, time. You know, you can be mindful of that, uh, and 
yeah, mindful of that. And and probably, you know, um, you, uh, certain things you can cut down and just mention and then keep going when it comes to time. Uh, and then, you know, uh, it's uh, it'll be even, even more impactful, right? Uh, because um, uh, we really wanted to hear, you know, the whole, uh, the, especially a topic like this, you know, we, we would want to hear the whole thing. And uh, yeah, so uh, you know, uh, planning according to time time given will really help you to uh, even finish uh, on a very uh, high impact kind of a note mm -hmm. right yeah sure, yeah, yeah I mean, it was good absolutely no no need to apologize at all we were blessed thank you and i um, just wanted to share something yeah sir. yeah uh, this message is uh, directly i never uh, meditated on it uh, but one day one uh, hindu con she was just coming to faith and she came to me and said uh, why don't you uh, compare our gods with your God? Then I said, how can I compare some, nothing with something, everything? God is everything. And we can, I cannot compare which is nothing. There is no, uh, nothing there. So then when I sat there, Holy Spirit God started revealing this character to me. And I was just standing in awe of that because I never saw Sarah like that before. But when I saw it and the love and the way God led those uh, people from faith to faith, Abraham and Sarah from faith to faith, it was so uh, it touched my heart and it was very powerful. And when I was praying, God wanted me to share it with you, with our friends also. Thank you. Right. Wonderful. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Okay, so uh, yeah, we've come to the end of this last session. So, um, this thing. so um, uh, I just wanted to say that Wednesday, this that is today, we are Monday and Wednesday. Um, uh, we okay, let me just stop the recording. Um, just stay with me for a minute, please. <laughs>